All right, problem number three on the final exam will be a truss problem. Uh, and I will tell you which method I want you to use. You have to use the correct method or uh, I'll take off points even if you get the, the right answer. And so it might be method of sections like this one. It might be method of joints. Be ready for either of them. So let's look at this one. Method of sections. Determine the forces in member J, I, D, E, and J, E. Yeah, so, so I think we can tell I'm going to cut it right here. I'm going to cut it right here and keep one half or the other. Uh, so first step, let me look at the whole free body diagram. Whole free body diagram. And solve for maybe this A, Y, A, X, G, Y. All right here. So can you tell that some of the force in X, A, X, it was going to be zero? Uh, but then let me sum the forces in the y direction, ay and gy, but minus 3, 5, 5, 6, 4, 4, 2 equals 0. I think that uh, adds up to 29. Uh, but let me sum the moments. I'll sum the moments about a. All right, sum the moments about a. ax goes straight through it, ay goes straight through it, this 3 kilonewtons goes straight through it. But then 5 kilonewtons times 2, that would be a negative moment. 5 times 4, uh, 6 times 6, 4 times its moment arm, right? These are all its moment arms, so 4 times 8. That 4 times 10, <clears throat> and this 2 times 12 plus GY times 12. I kind of went through that quickly. I probably shouldn't have because the, the moment equation might is probably the most important of the three equilibrium equations and it might be the hardest of the equilibrium equations. It's real easy to get a moment arm wrong, to get to forget to multiply times a moment arm, uh, but this one was, wasn't too bad, right? You know, it's this 5 times its moment arm of 2, this 5, how far away is it? 4. This 6, how far away is it? You know, it's perpendicular distance, it's moment arm from the point. Um, don't forget to multiply the unknown times its moment arm. Uh, one of the most common mistakes I see is you, you just <coughs> set this and then plus GY is equal to zero, and you forget to multiply GY times its moment arm of 12. Um, all right, so here I would get GY is... 13.5 kilonewtons. Plug this back in up there. I would get Ay is 15.5 uh, kilonewtons. All right, now I'm going to cut it, and I, I'm probably only going to keep this side. So, so actually, I probably didn't need to do the sum of the forces in X and sum of the forces in Y. I could have just summed the moments, solve for GY, and then then went ahead with cutting it. Um, but by doing the whole free body diagram, I could double check it by, by coming on the other side and keeping the other side. Um, but anyway, the, the more of these problems you do, the more comfortable you will be with doing things out of order, knowing when, what you have to do, what you don't have to do, taking some shortcuts. Um, so anyway, I've got GY 13.5. Let, let, let me cut this and redraw it. What's the method of sections do? It allows you to cut this, and then the, the members that you cut through, you expose their internal member, and for trusses, they're all two force members, and all of the internal members, the, mem the force is acting in the direction of the member, right? It's either in tension or compression. Um, all right, so here, this section, I know that GY right here is 13.5. I know that I had a 2 kilonewton force right there. I know that I had a 4 here and a 4 here. And then I cut this force inside DE. I drew just drew it in tension. Tension is always pulling. It is pulling at that section. And it's perfectly horizontal because it's in the direction of the member. Here, this <coughs> force right here, force <coughs> JE right there. I pulled it I put it in tension. What direction is it going? Let's look at these dimensions. Two by four. Two by four. This is a 
2 by 4. Let's see, 2 squared plus 4 squared, take the square root, square root of 20. And then this member right here, the force in member uh, Ji, let me see, Ji, it is going over... There's a few different ways I could think about this. Um, I could only look at this ratio uh, over 2 up 4 thirds, right? Over 2 up 4 thirds. Or I could, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at this ratio right here, right? So the same triangle, similar triangles. And so it is over 6 up 4 square root of 52. Uh, however you need to get that angle, you can do it. I like to do dimensions um, instead of calculating the angle and using sines and cosines, but you can do uh, whatever you need to do right there to, to do that. All right, <coughs> so let me... I've drawn that, I, I guess, in tension to begin with, and so what does that mean if my answer comes out negative? That means that my um, answer was... Um, it, then it means it's in compression, right? If I guess tension and it comes out negative, that means I guessed wrong, and so that means it is in compression. All right, but anyway, I've got this one right here. I can kind of draw it like a free body diagram, and I can sum the force in x equals zero, sum the force in y equals zero, sum the moments equals zero. And I'm going to start with the moment equation. That, that really is what you might could get into a habit of doing, is summing the moments, which moment, which point do you want to sum the moments about? Um, I like some moments about a point that goes through two of the unknowns. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe this point right here would be a good one. This point right here would be a good one. I don't know, maybe this point right here would have been a good one, uh, because that one goes through it and that one goes through it. Or, if you want to get really interesting, we could sum the moments about this point right here, even though it's not really on our... Um, section, we could sum the moments about that point, all right? And you could actually sum the moments about two different points and get two separate equations, uh, but then that would leave one of your leftover equations unnecessary. It doesn't matter, right? You can sum the moments about zero about any point. I'm sum the moments about down here, this point E. That's just my first instinct. Some of the moments about E. If DE goes through it, if JE goes straight through it, that 4 goes straight through it. Let's see, what about this 4 that is 2 away, creating a negative moment? This 2 that is 4 away, creating a negative moment. Remember positive and negative moments, right? How this would cause a clockwise, and I, I, would ch I like to choose counterclockwise, is positive. So these are all clockwise rotations, so that's why they're negative. But the 13.5 acting four away would create a clockwise, sorry, counterclockwise, a positive rotation. All right, now, here we go. Let's break this one into its components right here. That component right there and that component right there. That component goes straight through it. The four over square root of 52 component goes straight through it. But the six over square root of 52 <coughs> component of FJI has a moment arm Ah, and here's a little tricky, a little tricky. What is this length, that moment arm right there? Uh, if the whole thing is 4, and this is 1 third, 2 thirds, uh, it is 2 thirds of 4. Do, do y'all see that? 2 thirds. Let's see if I can write this. 2, ah, two-thirds of four is its moment arm. Uh, I did that. Maybe you can look at similar triangles. Let, let's look at similar triangles to visualize that. This triangle right here is four by six. This triangle right here I know is four. And, and then what is question mark? So four over six equals question mark over four. Uh, it would be eight thirds. Mm, you think about it that way. I don't know. I just kind of think about it. It's this would be one third of the total height. This would be two thirds of the total height. This would be three thirds of the total height. Four. 
Okay, it's pointed that way. That would be a positive moment. Set that equal to zero. And I would get F J I is negative 17.13 kilonewtons. What does that mean? That means F J I is 17.13 kilonewtons compression. That means it is 17.13 kilonewtons compression. That means it is not this way that I drew it. It is drawn in. Now, if I was going backwards to any equations that I've already written, I would plug in that negative 17.13 backwards into the equations. But now I'm, I'm just going forwards. I'm, I'm just going knowing that it's 17.13 and knowing that it is pointed that way. Right? So let's, um, sorry, let me add a page here. So let us go on to our sum of the forces in x equation. <coughs> Summing the forces in the x direction. Negative F D E, which I haven't solved for that yet. Minus, let's see, F J E, which component is the x component? The 2 over square root of 20 component. All right. Um, and then now I know that this one is 17.13, and it is pointed that way. So 17.13. What component of that, the 6 over square root of 52 component, is pointed in the positive x direction? That has uh, too many unknowns. So some, now some of the forces in the y direction. Uh, F, J, E, the 4 over square root of 20 component is pointed up. Let me do these other things minus 4 minus 4 minus 2, two really which just should just put minus 10 uh, don't forget that 13.5 as well okay now which component of this is in the y direction 17.13 the uh, 4 over square root of 52 component and it's in the negative y in the negative y so now set that equal to 0 Right, F, J, E becomes positive 6.7. What does that positive mean? That positive means, I guess correctly, and I guess tension, so it is in tension. And then I would go back to there, plug that in, and get F, D, E is positive 11.26 kilonewtons. Positive means I guess correctly, and I guess tension. For these trusses, you've got to put parentheses T or parentheses C. I should not see any negatives in your final answers that you are boxing in. If it is negative, then you should, you know, then it means you chose wrong, and so go back and specify compression or tension depending on what you chose. I always like to guess tension, then if my answer comes out negative, it was compression. So here, that's what I'm looking for, those three things boxed in. I'm not going to actually look at your um, drawings. I'm not going to look at your any free body diagrams. Uh, that's enough information that, um, oops, that's enough information um, to give me the, the total answer, the total answer. And so you could double check. I could have come from this side. I could have come from this left side uh, knowing AX and AY, and I could have solved for the force in here, the force in CD, the force in JE, and I would still get this exact thing. 17.13 kilonewtons compression, 6.7 kilonewtons tension, 11.26 kilonewtons tension. Uh, double check me on those, um, but that's what I've got for this problem.